So I've got a little secret. Over the past year, I've been a little obsessed at looking at all the ads for budget e-bikes. I get tons of ads on Facebook and Instagram. Well, I had an e-bike manufacturer reach out to me and say, hey, we've got a budget e-bike we would like you to review. So of course, I took them up on it. Let's get into it. This is the High Boy P7, and it is a commuting style mountain bike. Let's go ahead and let's go over all the specs and geometry and what this bike has to offer for only $1,000. Now the first thing you're gonna notice when you look at this High Boy is this beast right here. This fat down tube contains the battery. A 48 volt, 15 amp hour battery that they claim can get you upwards of 68 miles. Now to remove this battery, it's easy as one, two, three. You simply take this key, give it a turn, you'll see that it unlocks the battery. Then you can remove this latch and bam, the battery pops out. Not only can you charge this battery outside of the bike, but you can also charge it while it's on the bike. So the battery that's gonna come in this bike is made by a company called XLX. And whenever you get this bike, mine was charged about three quarters of the way. So as soon as I got this put together, I could get outside and rip around on it. One other thing about the battery is it's got this indicator light built into it. Now to be able to see this, you do have to remove the battery, but it's nice that this is built in. So if you're charging this away from the bike, you can see whether or not it's fully charged. Now to go along with that big battery, this has a 500 watt powered motor and it's built into the rear hub on this 27 five inch wheel. Now on these rims, they are 27.5 and it comes with some ZC rubber branded tires. Never heard of that brand but they are 27.5 and they're 2.2 inches wide. Now the seat post on this is really adjustable. They made this to where it would go almost all the way down to the very bottom to way up high for a really tall person. Now one of my favorite parts on this bike is this sweet little light that came on it. No need to buy an additional light, but you may wanna buy a rear light if you're gonna be riding this on the road. Check this thing out. It's pretty bright. Not only that, it does have this in it, a horn. Now this is a switch that I was using to turn on the light and to honk the horn. You just simply press that button, it locks into place and the light turns on. And then if you wanna use the horn, you just press the button. Now you may be looking at this and think, wow, this thing's got some suspension. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Don't be fooled by that. This is the one thing on this bike that is actually not very good. Everything else feels really solid, but this suspension is gonna need to be replaced relatively quickly. My suggestion, and I'll put some links below, is to go with a fully rigid aluminum fork. Now these brakes, they are a three finger lever, so they're nice and wide if you have really big hands. I personally prefer a two finger lever, but these will work just fine. They're made by a company called Waxing. Never heard of that, but I instantly thought of the Karate Kid. You know, wax on, wax off. Now these brakes, they do have cutoff switches built into the brake, which instantly kills power to the motor. So if you're a little bit worried that you're going too fast and the motor's pushing too much power, no worries. Just go ahead, squeeze the brakes, and the motor will stop. Now staying up front with these brakes, you'll see all these cables. Cables for the shutoff switches for the brakes, cables for the computer, cables for the light and the horn. The nice thing is, is they use these little cable ties that hold all these wires nicely together. And then once they have to run the wires back to the motor, they run them through the frame. So it's nice and concealed and organized. Now jumping over to the other side of the handlebar, you're gonna have a lot going on over here. Of course, you're gonna have your brake with your cutoff switch, but you're also gonna have your Shimano nine speed shifter. This is gonna be the only name brand part on this entire bike. I really appreciate that they went with a name brand when it came to the drivetrain. This also has a throttle. This is classified as a class two e-bike. And that means that it's pedal assist and also throttle assist. 
So if you want to get up to 21 miles an hour, you can do it without putting any effort in other than giving this a twist. Now, if you're a bike nerd like me, you're definitely going to appreciate these 760 millimeter wide bars. Most of these budget e-bikes come with super narrow bars. The High Boy seems to have done it right by putting at least 760 millimeter wide bars on. This will make you feel like you're really in control of this bike the entire time. Now that we're down here, let's go ahead and check out these brakes. These are mechanical disc brakes made by a company called Jake, and they've got 160 millimeter rotors front and back. The other thing is that this comes with a cadence sensor that detects whether or not you're pedaling. So if the motor is on and it's gonna give you assistance, you're gonna to need to be doing some pedaling before it kicks on. Normally on bikes, I take off any kickstands if a bike comes with one. This one, I'm gonna leave on because I'm gonna use it as like a commuter and around town. However, this one should have been pushed back a lot further because the way that this bike is built, I keep hitting my heel on this as I'm going down the road. Now the High Boy does have a pretty decent paint job. However, straight out of the box, there was a scratch right next to where you put the key in. Now, whenever you go to charge this, it does come with a charger. You can either take the battery out or you can just open this little port and plug it right in. The only indicator that you're charging is gonna be on this device in this little bitty tiny light right here. Whenever it is red, that means it's charging. And whenever it's green, it means it's fully charged. Now, whenever you are charging this, it will take four hours to get to 80% and five to six to get to that full 100. Now on the drive side of the bike, you will notice it does have a pretty big chain ring up front. Now, I don't know what size this actually is as I can't see any markings on it to indicate whether or not it's a 42 tooth or a 46 tooth. It's definitely a larger chain ring than what I see on my mountain bikes but that's perfectly fine because with this assist from the motor, you can have a really big chain ring to get maximum speed. The other nice thing about this is that it does have this little plastic protector. So if you're wearing long pants and you're commuting, you don't have to worry about your pants getting caught in the chain ring. Now, as you can see down here, this does have really nice cable management that this runs all the way to the motor and then goes in right here through the axle to connect into the motor. A very clean design. I'm really pleased with how Highboy actually set all this up. And then also you can see this is the Altus Shimano 9-speed rear derailleur. Now this bike does come with a permanent sticker that says Highboy. You can't actually remove this, but all of these yellow warning stickers are completely removable. And they say things like, make sure you use a specific charger and make sure you're following the rules of the road and wearing a helmet and make sure you plug in the cable correctly. So these warning stickers can all be removed the high boy can't, but it was nice to see that there are no stickers or generic branding on the fork. Now, as far as the ride height goes, I'm 5'11", and this bike feels relatively comfortable. I have a 32 inch end seam, and the seat post comes with 15 individually marked levels on this. I prefer mine on level four for my height. This seat is not the most comfortable. I'm used to smaller seats, but I'm used to better quality seats. So I would recommend upgrading this to something that's more comfortable for you. Now, one thing is I'm 5'11", which isn't too far away from the maximum recommended height of six foot two inches. And this stem feels a little long for me. I'm thinking that I'm gonna upgrade this to a much shorter stem, maybe a 45 or a 35 millimeter stem. Now this stem measured out at three and a half inches, which is around 88 millimeters. And that's a pretty long stem. This is a super easy and cheap upgrade. I'll put some links below for a much shorter stem because if you're any shorter than my height, you're definitely gonna want a shorter stem. That way you're sitting up a little bit more and you're a little bit more comfortable. So one other thing, this does have a nice little computer on it. It's nothing flashy, but it will let you change between multiple speeds. This bike comes with five different speed settings and an off mode where you can just pedal yourself. But being that this bike weighs over 55 pounds, you're definitely not gonna wanna do that unless you run out of battery. So now that we got this thing put together and you know a little bit more about it, let's take this thing outside and see if it'll let me ride it.
So there you go, that is the High Boy P7. What a ton of fun it was reviewing this bike. There's a few things that I really like about this bike. The main thing, this battery being so large. Being that it's a big battery, it means that I could commute all the way into work and all the way back home and still have battery left. That's a pretty big bonus. Thank you so much, High Boy, for sending me this bike. I'm glad that I got to review it. But also a big thanks to all my viewers because if it wasn't for you watching my content and subscribing, High Boy wouldn't have reached out to me to be able to review this bike. So huge thanks to everybody who's watching this, my subscribers, and especially my drop-in crew pro members. But for now, we're gonna jump back over to the Marin because I've got something I wanna install.